Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Talalipop and today we're doing a comparison video on the different bikes offered in Trex Excalibur range. I'm going to go over all the main differences between the Trek Excalibur 7, 8, and 9, covering all the things that will affect how these bikes handle on trails, and hopefully help you guys figure out which one is the best for you. Now the Excalibur 7 and 8 had some pretty big updates for 2021, so to make this simpler to understand, I'm only going to be focusing on the 2021 Excalibur range. However, if you are looking into getting a 2020 model, I have made a full comparison video highlighting all the differences between the 2020 and 2021 bikes, so hopefully that video can help you out in understanding some of those big changes. Additionally, I'm going to keep this organized by focusing on a different component on these bikes at a time, such as the drivetrain, the brakes, or the suspension, so you can clearly see what changes between the models. I'll also include tables at the end of this video that show all the differences and details. But before we get into it, I'm going to give a quick background on the Excaliburs. The Excalibur bikes are basically Trek's fast cross-country mountain bikes, designed to be lightweight and introduce riders to the world of XC racing. They range from the Excalibur 7, which is more suited towards riders beginning their journey in racing, to the Excalibur 9, which is a race-ready bike designed to compete. There are no women's versions of these bikes available, and the international versions are the same bikes, but they just come in some different colors. I won't be covering all the color differences in this video since I've talked about them in my 2020 vs 2021 comparison video, so if you are interested in those, please check out that video as well. But with that stuff out of the way, let's get into the comparison. I'm going to start by talking about the similarities between these three bikes, so we can focus on what actually changes between them later. The main thing shared between these bikes is the frame. Every bike in the Excalibur lineup uses Trex Alpha Gold Aluminum frame with internal cable routing. I'll throw up a picture of the specifications on this frame, but there's too many to go through all of them in this video and they have not changed since 2020. All the Excaliburs also share the same pedals, seat post, seat, stem, handlebars, grips, rims, and brake rotors. I won't go into all the details on these components since if you get an Excalibur, you're going to get these no matter which one you choose. Now let's talk about what you actually have to decide between when getting an Excalibur. The things that differ between these bikes, besides the price, are the suspension forks, brakes, wheels, which include the hubs and tires, and drivetrain, which consists of things like the shifters, cassettes, and cranks. That's a lot, but I'll try my best to simplify everything in this video. Starting with the price, the Excalibur 7 comes in at $1,020, while the Excalibur 8 costs $1,270, and the Excalibur 9 costs $1,580. Next, I'm going to talk about the suspension forks, which are actually pretty similar between the bikes. The Excalibur 7, 8, and 9 actually all use the same suspension fork, which is the RockShox Judy Silver Air Fork with 100mm of travel, including a turnkey lockout and tapered steerer. However, the Excalibur 7 actually uses a 100x5mm quick release axle, while both the other bikes use a Boost 110 15mm Maxil Light Axle, which gives added stiffness and stability to the front of the bike. The Excalibur 9 also has a remote feature for its lockout, so you can push a lever to lock out the suspension instead of manually turning it. Then we have the brakes. All the bikes come with hydraulic disc brakes with 160mm rotors in the rear and 180mm rotors in the front, but the Excalibur 7 and 8 use the Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes, which come from Shimano's Olivio group set while the Excalibur 9 has the Shimano MT400 hydraulic disc brakes from Shimano's Acera group set. These are all entry-level brakes, and they even look very similar to one another, so I'm not entirely sure why the Excalibur 9 uses a different one, but they should generally work about the same. Moving on, we have the wheels. Starting with the hubs, the Excalibur 7 uses a Formula DC 20 100mm through skew front hub, while the Excalibur 8 and 9 use the same Bontrager alloy Boost 110 15mm through axle front hub. The Excalibur 7 also uses a Formula DC 2241 Boost 141 rear hub with 5mm QR, while the Excalibur 8 uses a Formula DCL 141Q 
Boost 141, 5mm QR, and the Excalibur 9 uses a Bontrager alloy Boost 141, 5mm QR. Now, I don't personally know too much about these mountain bike hubs, but as you upgrade them, you will see better components and bearings that allow the bike to engage quicker and essentially pedal easier and faster. The tires are also different between bikes, with the Excalibur 7 using Bontrager XR2 comp tires, while the 8 and 9 use the Bontrager XR3 comp tires. All of these are 2.2 inches wide, but the extra small and small frame sizes use 27.5 tires, while the medium and above sizes use 29ers. The XR3 tires have a different tread pattern and are lighter than the XR2s, and thus more oriented towards XC racing. And finally, we have the drivetrain. In order to make this simpler, I won't be talking about all the specifications on all the drivetrain parts, but I will still include tables at the end of this video that do include every specification that Trek provides on their website. Starting with a general overview, the Excalibur 7 uses a Shimano Dior M4100 1x10 drivetrain, which is Shimano's entry-level drivetrain for serious mountain biking. The Excalibur 8 uses a SRAM SX Eagle 1x12 drivetrain, which is SRAM's entry-level drivetrain, and the Excalibur 9 uses a Shimano SLX M7100 1x12 drivetrain, which is a step above the Shimano Dior. The 1x12 drivetrains are generally preferred by serious mountain bikers, but that being said, if you are a more entry-level mountain biker or want to get into racing, the Dior is still a great option. There are many disputes on SRAM versus Shimano drivetrains, and from what I've heard, it's mainly based on personal preference, so the best thing to do to determine which drivetrain is best for you is to test them out on these bikes and see how they feel. That being said, generally the Shimano SLX drivetrain will be smoother and quieter than the SRAM SX. But in terms of actual components, I will go over those now. The shifters progressively get better and are different depending on how many gears the bike has, but once again how they feel is dependent on personal preference. They all have rapid fire shifting which allows you to shift multiple gears at a time, but the higher end SRAM and Shimano SLX versions shift much quicker and smoother. The rear derailers are also different depending on the specific group set the bikes come with, but they all have long cage designs to accommodate a wider range of gears in the rear cassette. Generally, the higher-end models will be quieter and work faster in terms of shifting gears properly. The cranks progressively get better and lighter as well and depend on the group set, but they all have 30 teeth and should perform similarly. And the last component I'll talk about is the cassette. The Excalibur 7 uses a Shimano Dior M4100 11-46 tooth 10-speed cassette, while the Excalibur 8 uses a SRAM PG1210 Eagle 11-50 tooth 12-speed, and the Excalibur 9 uses a Shimano SLX M7100 10-51 tooth 12-speed cassette. As the models get better and more expensive, the amount of teeth on the smallest cog in the cassette gets lower, while the amount of teeth in the largest cog gets larger. Typically, less teeth on the smallest cog translates to quicker pedaling in flat areas, while more teeth on the largest cog translates to easier pedaling uphill. Thus, the Excalibur 9 should be more efficient in pedaling. Now, despite having some different components, the weights of all three bikes are pretty similar, but the Excalibur 8 weighs around a pound more than the other two bikes. But with that, I've covered all the components that make the Excalibur 7, 8, and 9 differ from one another. I'll give a summary on these bikes while I show some tables that simplify what I talked about, but basically the Excalibur 7 is intended for riders who want to get into cross-country racing and see how it feels and kind of grow their skills with a bike that will help them out. The Excalibur 8 takes it a step up and is more intended for races and marathons, while the Excalibur 9 is the top end model and is for people who are comfortable racing or really want to get into racing, and for people who really value speed and cutting off a few seconds from their lap times. But that is all for this video. If you enjoyed and this helped you out, please leave a like and subscribe, and leave a comment below if you noticed a mistake or have any questions or suggestions. But thank you so much for watching, and keep biking.